Can you feel it in the room? So I am Reverend Leslie Goodwin. I'm the associate minister here at New Vision Center. And what a fun day it is to start out with celebrating the practitioners and to be in joy, to enjoy, to be in joy around all of the good that is always, always happening here. And I want to caution us against this thing that can happen where we start to create a false dichotomy between the enlightened ones and the rest of us. <laughs> because truly, um, what Jolene said in the video that Jeff put together is so true. What it is that you are going through, no matter what it is, I assure you, one of us has been through it or is going through it right now. It's not as if you cross the threshold, there's this magical threshold and you cross it and I have no more problems ever for the rest of time. Instead, it's this trajectory that is just moving us through whatever comes naturally and beautifully. And when the bumps appear, because life still happens to everyone, right? When the bumps appear, we have more tools and here's the key, a higher likelihood of using the tools to move through. And that's the goal, right? The biggest question we get asked, like literally every day is, but how? How do I move through what is happening when it's so intense and it's so real and it's, it's in my face and it's every day and the grief and the pain and the struggle is so present? How? And the interesting thing is the process of becoming a practitioner is not really different than the process of becoming a minister is not really different than the process of moving through whatever is in front of you. Here in Science of Mind, we believe in healing. We believe in healing through prayer and consciousness. That can feel like a little bit of an old-fashioned idea, right? A, a little bit of a non-scientific idea that we can be immediately healed through prayer and consciousness. But if we truly believe what we say we believe here in, in this form of spirituality, we know that wholeness is our birthright. Wholeness is the natural state of who and what we are before we hit the bumps. And no bump is significant enough to dislodge this truth of who we really are. It might scatter our thoughts about it for a moment. Sometimes a big moment, sometimes a big scatter. But we always reset to the truth of our being. And the truth of our being is wholeness. That there is forever a place within each one of us, no matter how intense what we're going through is, there is a place within us that has never been touched, that has never been harmed, that has never been damaged, that could never be broken, a place in us that cannot die, that cannot be lessened, because it is that place which is one in the one, as Reverend Karen just said, one in the divine, in that space where there is only one. And the true truth is spirit, God, the universe, herald, whatever you call it, cannot be broken, cannot be lessened, cannot be cut up into little pieces. Ashley isn't this little piece of God. And Tom isn't this little piece of God. That's not how it works. We are all one in the one completely. Which means the allness of spirit is present in every single one of us in its entirety. Don't you love a good quantum physics paradox? I love you two so much. <laughs> Getting my nerdy quantum physics joke. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll hear someone speak up in a class, and they say, I feel like I'm a practitioner already. And you get one of two responses to this. You get, 
Who do you think you are? I haven't seen you take Pratt class. Or you get yes, 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 yes. The yes is usually coming from the teacher because they have read Ernest Holmes say things like this. I believe that everyone in this room should be a practitioner, consciously using definite principle for a specific purpose. Now, one doesn't have to be a professional practitioner. I don't mean that. But we should know that what we believe and why and how to use it. We should know that. We should each know that. Whether you feel the vocational call to act as a professional licensed practitioner in the world, that's totally up to you and your connection with spirit. Some of us do. Most of us don't. And that is all good. But what we should be if we so choose, if we can claim that call when it rises up in us, if there's a part of you going, please finish the sentence. There's a semicolon hanging. Tell me what I, what I can do, what I ought do, what I should do, what I feel is pulling me forward. If that is you, I speak to you when I say what you should do if you feel the calling to act as a, a lowercase p practitioner of science of mind in the world is to dedicate your life to walking out these principles in the way that it makes sense to you. Professional practitioners, we have this path built for us, right? We show up at the center, a minister will point us in a direction, we have a prat core, we do roles. It's, it's specific. If we choose to be a practitioner in the world, it's wide open. It's wide open. We can do so many, many things. But here's the thing, it's a daily choice. Harkening back to last week's message, it's a daily choice to sit in the prayer chair every day. Not most days, not the days when I feel like it, not the days when I don't have other things to do, not the days when I'm feeling awesome. Dude, that would be like no days for me. Every day, every day, in spiritual practice, daily, substantial, spiritual practice. And what's the payoff? What's the payoff of that? When people come to me and ask me, but how? How do I remember that God is my truth? How do I remember? How do we remember? Daily, substantial, spiritual practice. How do I keep the principles of science of mind front and foremost in my mind as I go through my day? Daily, substantial, spiritual practice. How, how when I'm faced with the pain that is pulling me under to the weight of which I cannot even think or form words, we've all had that day, right? We have all had that day, and we will all have that day again because that is what life is. But what do, we, what do we do? How do we remember to take the next breath? Daily, substantial, spiritual practice. Does it matter what kind? No. Does it matter what your prayer sounds like? No. Does it matter what kind of meditation? No. Does it have to be Ernest Holmes? No. I mean, I think it does, but no. What matters is that every day you make the choice to zoom in on what you believe is the depth of truth and turn to it over and over and over like it's your oxygen because it is. Because it is. And then a day will come and some mysterious day when you realize, hey, that thing that used to upset me so much, it doesn't upset me as much anymore. Or that thing that used to just send me off the edge, I'm calmer about it now. And that thing I used to think I couldn't do, I know I can. And no big magic thing 
happened. No monumental experience shone down. Jesus did not appear. I say this about every 15th sermon because I'm waiting for him to just be like, I'm here. <laughs> that will be a cool day. We don't need to have the mountains move and the skies to thunder down upon us to know something substantial has happened. It happens in these tiny little increments when we take part in... Right? It works us. And that's the how. And I am so sorry it's not a sexier answer. I would love to give you a sexier answer that the, you just go to this workshop and ha, ah, it happens. But truly it is, it is the spiritual practice thing. And then there's the day, even harder than the hardest day I've talked about. There's the day when you can't even do that. When you're so puddled in the heart of what is going on with you that you can't even sit in the chair. You hate the chair. Screw the chair. It's just me, maybe, that's been through this. But there have been times when I have been, screw God. Right? Failed me. Failed me. It's happened. When things have gone so far awry that I felt completely abandoned and completely crushed. And that was not a day to sit in my prayer chair. I just I couldn't do it, wouldn't do it, wasn't going to do it, considered throwing the chair. So what do you do then? What do you do then? That, that is when we actually call a practitioner, a licensed professional practitioner. Now you can call us before that and it's a good idea. But if you find yourself to the point where you can't even conceive of any steps to move in any direction, any prayer, any words, any meditation, that is when it's essential that you connect with somebody who can. As licensed professional practitioners, we are trained on how to sit with someone who is right in the depths of the depths of the depths, the hardest, hardest parts of life, how to look right in your eyes when that's happening and know who you are, who you really are to know who everyone in your story is, that each one is an aspect of God unfolding and that somewhere in the heart of that awful unfoldment that feels like it is going to tear you to pieces, that right action is happening. From the human perspective, we can't always see it, right? The time spans are too long, and we can't see what's in everybody's mind and heart. But there is a place of faith where we know that God can and does. And the professional practitioner, we've made it our art to know that for you, whatever is going on, that there is nothing you can have done that is too much for grace, there is nothing that anyone can have done to you that cannot be healed. When we're together in spirit, this is what we do. This is what we do. And how did we get to the place of being able to do that? Over years and years and years. Now here's something that you may not know, and it might even surprise you, and that is, Pretty much every practitioner and minister I know has a practitioner, has someone that they speak to on a regular basis to continue to deepen and work on our own consciousnesses. Why? Because we can do it for you. But when we're racked in that pain, when we're pulled into shreds, we can't do it for ourselves all the time either. It's normal and it's healthy. It is not the enlightened ones and the rest of us. It's our life and those who can see through the humanity, the manifest lowercase r reality through to the heart of divine reality because we are wrapped in our emotions around the situation because it's not ours. Practitioners, licensed professional practitioners, do all kinds of things. We see them 
all over the place around here. And one of the things that you can hire a practitioner to do for you is sessions. And this is, it's sort of a cross between therapy and life coaching and faith healing, smooshed together. And it is one-on-one -on -one opportunity to get attention and prayer and, if necessary, a little bit of spiritual coaching or reminding of spiritual principle. The people that I know who have moved the most gracefully through incredibly challenging circumstances are the people who have an ongoing committed relationship with a licensed practitioner, a monthly tune-up, a quarterly check-in. And when the stuff really hits the road, sometimes a weekly session or even more, so that when they cannot pull themselves together enough yet to do that daily substantial spiritual practice, someone is supporting them in that. It is not uncommon to be in a place where you cannot have faith that it's going to be okay when it's really hard. That's when you have faith in our faith. Because you can see it in our faces that we, we know the truth. We can see it. We can feel it. It's anchored. I see a bunch of like quiet nods and it's the practitioners and ministers in the room and the people who are on that path who are, have been working on that daily substantial spiritual practice to the point where we can hold that energy. And the only thing that gets in our way is this idea that I should be able to do it myself. If I were good enough, spiritual enough, a good religious scientist, a good MVC person, I would be able to do it myself. Friends, I can't do it myself. Karen doesn't do it herself. Jeff doesn't do it himself. We all have practitioners and mentors and teachers and leaders who guide us too. Becoming a practitioner, our minister, isn't some crown awarding. We keep joking that the ordination is a coronation. I mean, I'll wear a crown. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Especially if it's sparkly. But that's not what it's about. It's about staying in the rhythm of daily, substantial, spiritual practice long enough and often enough that we can share the growth experience that comes with it. Every one of your ministers started where you are now. Every single one of us started as a person. Uh, most of us in the back row, Jeff and I were in the back row, didn't know anybody, crying. Because something had been so intense and so hardcore that we just needed to try something, anything to help. And 15 years later, were ministers. What happened in the in-between? And not a whole lot of anything else. <laughs> Truly, that, that's what it is. Have we done other stuff? Yeah, we've done, we've done lots of other stuff. But what got us here was that, was time in the prayer chair. Time in the prayer chair. Ernest Holmes wrote, humanity sees the miserable exterior condition. The practitioner sees the divine inner perfection. <sighs> I wish that I could stand up here and give every single one of you a practitioner session, a whole practitioner session. But that isn't really the way um, this works, and Karen wouldn't give me an hour. <laughs> what I can do is invite you into the process of feeling what it feels like to have a practitioner pray specifically for you. So I invite you to allow to rise up within yourself a condition, something in your life that you would like to be experiencing differently, something that's on your heart. Just let it rise up and just hold it there. As we close our eyes or soften our gaze, <sighs> there is only one, one life, one truth, one heart that we call infinite presence, that we call the divine by so many names all throughout time and traditions all over the globe. Hearts reach to this one. 
feeling for its wholeness, its unconditional love, its flowing abundance, its infinite truth. It is the place of all wellness and all goodness, all beauty pouring forth from every aspect of the planet. It has created everything that ever was or ever will be, and it has built into every single one of its creations its perfection. Where there's nothing missing, nothing needs to be added. Every single element is aligned and divine and beautiful. And what I know, I, Leslie, know from my own life is that I am that. I am made of that same substance that the divine built into all of life. It built me with that substance and into me it has woven its pure unconditional love, its brilliance and intelligence and wisdom, its wholeness, its wellness, its beauty and its balance. The abundance of all of life is mine now, not because I'm special, not because I've learned anything or done anything, but because it is the truth of who I am and I couldn't lessen it even if I tried. It would be like not being human. I simply am what I am, divinity in this unique form. And as I know this truth about myself, I know this truth about this beloved in front of me that is whole and complete and perfect with not a, an element missing and nothing that needs to be added where nothing has ever been broken. And I know that this beautiful beloved is an expression of this divine good right here, right now, that seated into them is the wholeness, the allness of God in its full magnificence, just exactly as they are right here, right now. And when I know this truth about them, I speak my word for this beloved right now, knowing that this issue that is up in their life and their heart right here, right now, that it is rising up for a healing in this moment. That spirit is activating the part of this beloved that has always been ready to handle this situation that the abundance of all of life is conspiring to find the healing goodness right in the center of their being with no need to go outside for any other solution. It is built into their beingness in this moment. And I can feel it to the very depths of my soul that this is the truth, that there is a healing right now, a releasing of any beliefs or patterns or ideas that have ever held them in any kind of bondage, of falling away, of things that were never true, and a lightening up into a recognition of the sense of possibilities, that the, the answers that they are seeking are seeking them and are moving toward them elegantly and beautifully right here, right now, in this moment, with no need to wait and no need to negotiate or figure it out or work out in the physical world. It is happening now here in the midst of this prayer that cells are healing themselves, that monetary situations are being flooded with good, that whatever is going on is being softened and healed and released right here, right now, perfectly and beautifully. And I am so grateful to know this truth, to know it to the very depths of my being, that this precious beloved hearing these words is already receiving their good, and that it increases and grows and deepens with every breath. And so I release this word into the action of universal law, trusting implicitly that spirit does spirit's job and all we need to do is relax and enjoy. So I call it good. And so it is. And that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like to have that prayer to have that session, to have that time, to have that moment. Ernest Holmes wrote, if a spiritual mind treatment could be seen, it would be seen as a pathway of light. All spiritually minded metaphysical practitioners, when they are treating, often experience a light about everything and feel that they are immersed in light. They're immersed in light. Did you feel immersed in light? I did. I did. And so here is the invitation. 
for this week, for this life, is to start to see yourself as a practitioner of science of mind. Start to see yourself as stepping into the role of choosing to daily take the steps that move you in the direction of a fuller open heart, of a more connected relationship with indwelling spirit, to open yourself up to the realization that it isn't a dichotomy of practitioners and everybody else, but that we are all on this walk together and that you are invited. You are invited. And so it is.